Being rich is not that bad. You have everything as long as the law allows it. Funny you should mention the law. You know, this little thing is not for everyone, especially if you're a member of the 10 wealthiest royal families in the world. Now they can truly have everything they ever want. Just take a look at how they live. Number 10. Liechtenstein's Royal Family Nestled snugly between the Alpine giants, Switzerland and Austria, Liechtenstein may not be on your radar, unless you're a geography enthusiast or a fan of extreme wealth, but this small Alpine country is home to the 10th wealthiest royal family in the world, the Liechtenstein family. But how did a country smaller than Manhattan manage to produce one of the wealthiest royal families in the world? Well, two words. Offshore accounts. Yes, up until a decade ago, Liechtenstein was considered an offshore tax haven. The biggest bank, of course, was owned by the prince himself. Thus, Hans Adam II accumulated a vast fortune of $7.5 billion over the years. Since the country is no longer a bank for the dirty money of the richest, Liechtenstein's net value has plummeted, and today they are worth merely $4.4 billion. Still, the Liechtenstein family is full of entrepreneurs, bankers, and brilliant financial experts who invest and manage their funds expertly. Naturally, they are not among the biggest spenders out there. Well, they do live in a literal castle overlooking the capital of Liechtenstein, the Duz. The castle is worth more than $50 million. Oh, and let's not forget his impressive collection of artwork, estimated at around $500 million which he showcases with true elegance in his Vienna palace. But wait, there's more! The Liechtenstein royal family also boasts ownership of LGT Bank, worth nearly $2.6 billion, and a princely fund with a cool $1.4 billion invested in it. Their land holdings are nothing to scoff at either, with some 20,000 hectares in Austria used for various purposes, from wood production to nature reserves, hunting, and fishing grounds. And did I mention their prized possession? A genuine moon rock from the Apollo 11 mission. A thank you gift for Liechtenstein's significant contribution to the Apollo project. Still, the family bought their fair share of lavish luxuries over the years. For example, in 2013, Prince Hans Adam II purchased a $100 million yacht named the princely yacht. The yacht is 213 feet long and has six cabins, a swimming pool, and a helicopter landing pad. Not bad for such a modest ruler. Moreover, in 2014, Princess Charlene of Liechtenstein wore a $1 million diamond tiara to a royal wedding in Monaco. The tiara is made of white gold and is encrusted with over 1,000 diamonds. Finally, in 2015, Prince Alois of Liechtenstein purchased a $20 million estate in Switzerland. The estate includes a castle, a vineyard, and a forest. So, hunting and drinking wine is probably on the menu these days. Still, compared to our next entry, the Liechtensteins might as well live like hermits. Number 9. Morocco's Royal Family Ah, Morocco. The land of enchanting landscapes, vibrant souls, and yes, you guessed it, one seriously rich royal family. These Moroccan monarchs have been holding the reins of power for five centuries. And boy, has it paid off! The Moroccan royal family, a squad of 19, boasts a combined wealth that would make even the wealthiest sheikhs take a second look. Over $8.2 billion. Leading the charge in this wealth parade is none other than King Mohammed VI, whose net worth alone could make a billionaire blush. But let's talk about their lavish lifestyle. The king himself is known for his ultra-luxurious palaces that defy imagination. With a monthly budget of a staggering $900,000 just for upkeep, you can bet that these palaces are nothing short of extravagant. With lush green gardens, fountains galore, 
and every amenity fit for royalty. These are not your average abodes. But the king doesn't stop at palaces. His collection of cars could make any automobile enthusiast green with envy. With over 600 vehicles, including a Rolls-Royce Phantom worth a cool million dollars and a fleet of high-end brands, his garage alone is worth more than some people's entire estates. And let's not forget the personal Boeing 737 BBJ for jet-setting in style, worth over $90 million. Then there's his penchant for yachts. His 230-foot superyacht, El Bugaz I, may be relatively modest, costing a mere $50 million, but it comes complete with private jacuzzis, cinemas, swimming pools, and, of course, a helipad. Because, let's face it, what's a yacht without a helipad these days? Now, some may argue that King Mohammed VI is relatively modest in comparison to his fellow rulers on the world's rich list, but don't be fooled. When you're living in palaces worth over a billion dollars, flying in a customized Boeing 747-400 with defensive and offensive capabilities, and cruising the seas on a multi-million dollar yacht, you're definitely living life to the fullest. Of course, if that's so, the Dubai royal family has long since been in overdrive. Number 8. Dubai's Royal Family The Al Maktoum family may not be the richest out there, but when it comes to opulence and extravagance, few royal families can hold a candle to the Dubai rulers. With a collective net worth surpassing $18 billion, they've turned Dubai into a playground for the ultra-rich, living a life of unparalleled luxury. Their royal residence, the $500 million Zabil Palace, spans 100,000 square feet and drips with precious metals, ivory, and intricate decorations. It boasts a private cinema, spa center, game room, and multiple swimming pools, catering to Sheikh Mohammed's six wives and their entertainment needs. Notably, they hosted one of the most lavish weddings ever, costing a staggering $200 million, including a $100 million stadium. Property-wise, the Al Maktoum family owns vast swathes of land in Scotland, including a castle and golf course, as well as prime properties in Newmarket and London, such as a $138 million mansion in Kensington Palace Gardens. The Al Maktoum family's real estate empire extends internationally, with properties in Morocco, Monaco, and the UK. They've also played a pivotal role in iconic landmarks like the Burj Khalifa, Palm Jumeirah, and Dubai Mall, each worth billions. Their garage is a treasure trove of luxury cars, including a $4 million Bugatti Veyron, a $2.5 million Lamborghini Reventon, and a $1.5 million Ferrari Enzo, among others. Crown Prince Hamdan, known as Faza, takes it up a notch with golden cars and a fleet of amphibious vehicles. Their fleet of yachts, valued at over $2 billion, includes the 531-foot-long Dubai, the Quattro L, the Moonlight 2, and more, offering the epitome of maritime luxury. The Dubai royal family doesn't stop at jets. They own an entire airline, Emirates, with over 250 aircraft. Emirates is renowned for its opulent interiors, charging over $600 per hour for the privilege of flying in luxury. Prince Hamdan, a modern-day Aladdin, indulges in extravagant hobbies like scuba diving and equestrian pursuits. His love for animals knows no bounds, with camel beauty pageants, golden camels, and a private zoo exceeding $100 million in cost. Overwhelming indeed, but if you think that's extravagant, just look at who's coming up next. Number 7. Brunei's Royal Family If this was a list of the most outrageous purchases by royalties, Sultan Hassan al-Bolkiah would, without a doubt, take the first spot. 
Rarely can you find a man with more extravagant taste than this ruler. Worst of all, with a staggering net worth of $30 million, he has money to fund his madness. One of the Sultan's more notorious expenses was a $20,000 haircut, where he flew his favorite London barber on a private plane and lodged him in a five-star hotel just for a 30-minute trim. Who else thinks that the Sultan was trying to hook up with his barber and was flexing his wealth? This, however, is just a glimpse into the Sultan's world of excess. The Sultan's car collection is legendary, with around 7,000 cars, including bespoke creations and iconic models like the Lamborghini Veneno, Bugatti Veyron, and Ferrari F40, valued at over $2 billion. His penchant for extravagance extends to the skies with a $400 million private Boeing 747-430 that received a golden makeover worth $133 million. ...and opulent interiors, even including a golden toilet. I mean, how else are you supposed to take a dump in a golden jet? For a home, the Sultan resides in the Nurul Iman Palace which is basically a small city with 1,780 rooms, 257 bathrooms, and enough space to get lost for days. Its value is so astronomical that no one even dares to put a price tag on it. But the Sultan's real estate game doesn't stop at the palace gates. He owns a $30 million mansion in Beverly Hills, a $110 million chateau in France, and a $400 million hotel in London. So why didn't he use this hotel to get his hair cut? I'm telling you, he was aggressively flirting. There's no other explanation. Meanwhile, Prince Mateen, the Sultan's son, has a more... modest lifestyle, with access to over $20 billion. He's a social media sensation, showing off by playing with his pet Bengal tiger, flying his personal helicopter, and driving a car collection worth over $1 billion. His golden-plated Lamborghinis are basically rolling treasure chests. Now, you might think this royal has gone mad with money, and there isn't a more extravagant spender than the Sultan of Brunei. Well, the King of Thailand might want you to hold his beer for this. Number 6. Thailand's Royal Family Thailand's royal family is like the cast of a never-ending soap opera, where opulence is the star of the show. Led by the extravagant King Vajiralongkorn, or Rama X, if you prefer drama with a Roman twist, this royal clan isn't shy about flaunting their riches. If all monarchs were like him, there would be a global rush to turn palaces into playgrounds and tiaras into trampolines. When Rama X assumed the throne, his first decree seemed to be, Thailand's wealth? All mine. Now he's sitting on a treasure chest worth over $43 billion, making him the richest royal on the planet. His spending habits are legendary, from frolicking in the Bavarian Alps to snapping up multi-million dollar pads in the same neighborhood while having a perfectly good palace in Bangkok all in the name of royal leisure. Private jets and fancy cars? Naturally, they're in his shopping cart. His garage's contents might be worth a mere $5 million, but his hangars could fund a small country with aircraft valued at nearly $2 billion. However, the Thai royal family's wealth isn't confined to Rama X. The late great Bhumimol Adulyadej established a fund to keep the royal family's money relatively safe. So despite Rama X's frivolous spending, the Adulyadej family is actually worth around $60 billion. Yes, Rama X is nothing like his father. To be honest, he's nothing like any other king, regardless of their extravagant taste. Still, the Thai royal family is not even in the top five most affluent crown wearers in the world. So, let's push forward to the more classy and opulent royalties out there. Number 5. The British Royal Family When we talk about royal families, our minds often slip into thinking about the British Royal Families. 
Indeed, the Windsors have become more than mere rulers. They've emerged as pop icons, like the Kardashians, only with that little thing called class. Of course, being on top of one of the biggest economies in the world and owning vast lands across the UK, the Windsors have accumulated a vast fortune over the years. Today, the family is worth the jaw-dropping $88 billion. Unlike other royal families around the world, the lion's share is not held by the king alone. Actually, Charles III is worth around $600 million, which is quite a bump compared to his $40 million last year. Well, when your ultra-rich queen mother leaves you her $500 million in her will, this sort of thing tends to happen. But still, the majority of the family funds are locked in their estates, which, unfortunately for them, are not really up for sale. Buckingham Palace alone costs $5 billion. But can you imagine the king selling it? The thing about the British family, though, is that when it comes to showing off their riches, the British royals are about as subtle as a brick to the face. You won't catch them rolling up to Buckingham Palace in a golden car or a yacht that used to be a warship. The only time you can see the true splendor of this family's wealth is during the coronation. Three gorgeous carriages adorned with jewels and gold, priceless clothes, and of course, the creme de la creme, the crown jewels. This is a collection of over 100 objects and 23,000 gemstones. They're valued at a cool $4 billion, making them more valuable than two of the three William and Kate children. So while the British royal family tries to fool us into thinking that they're quite modest and well-mannered, I do not doubt that King Charles swims in a pool of wealth so deep that even Scrooge McDuck would be impressed. Otherwise, how could you explain the extravagant lifestyles of the rest of our list? Number 4. Abu Dhabi's Royal Family The Al Nayan family may not be trillionaires, but they surely live like one. With a net worth rumored to be around $150 billion, they're richer than about three quarters of the countries in the world. Naturally, they do tend to go a bit overboard with their spending and luxurious lifestyle. First and foremost, forget about regular homes. The Al Nayan clan resides in bona fide palaces. The crown jewel, Casa Al Watan in Abu Dhabi, is valued at a jaw dropping $2.7 billion dollars. It's not just a home, it's a cultural attraction. The Al Nayan family isn't content with owning mere royal palaces and gorgeous houses. They've invested over seven billion dollars globally, essentially playing Monopoly with real-life properties. Think Berkeley Square House, Tilney House, and Ham Ridings in the UK. They're not collecting $200 when they pass go they're buying the whole neighborhood. And what good is an ultra-luxurious palace if it doesn't have one genuinely mesmerizing garage? Picture a garage filled with over 200 cars, including Bugatti Veyron and Lamborghini Veninos. Their son got a $3.3 million solid gold Mercedes-Benz for his 21st birthday. Because who doesn't want to feel like James Bond, right? The name's Nyan. Al Nyan. Private jets? Of course! Their Airbus A380, worth half a billion dollars, isn't just a mode of transportation. It's a flying five-star hotel. And their Boeing 787 Dreamliner? It's the dreamiest way to travel. No more cramped seats and peanuts for them. It's champagne wishes and caviar dreams at 35,000 feet. What about yachts? The Al Nayan family's collection can make a Bond villain blush. Azam, worth $600 million, was once the world's largest superyacht. It has everything you need for a luxurious oceanic escape. A helipad, cinema, swimming pool, and even a gym. The best part? It comes with a No Ordinary Mortals Allowed sign. Yes, the Al Nayan family has figured it out. Live large and pay little attention to the world around you. A good tactic indeed, 
but the rulers of Qatar had a vastly different view. With twice as much money, the Qatar royals seem a bit more modest. But don't be fooled, they also have some extravagance in their lives. Number 3. Qatar's Royal Family Now, many royals have wished for the impossible and got it. Art, private jets, ultra-luxurious cars, opulent mega-yachts, it's all on the menu. But there is only one family that wanted to get all the best soccer players in their backyard and received it. Qatar. The Qatar royal family lives a life of unparalleled luxury, amassing a staggering net worth of approximately $335 billion. Their opulent lifestyle is a testament to their immense wealth, stemming primarily from fossil fuel exports. These folks have more real estate in their pockets than most of us have pocket change. The UK is practically their second home, where they've bought up everything, from skyscrapers to Olympic villages. They've got enough prime properties to make even real estate tycoons jealous. Their palatial residences in Qatar are basically where Game of Thrones meets MTV Cribs. We're talking gold-coated everything and interiors fancier than a five-star hotel. Hosting a tea party for dignitaries? No problem. They've got a palace for that. When it comes to cars, they've got a whole fleet that could rival any Fast and Furious movie. I do not doubt that Dom would be highly pleased to have a family like that. Bugattis, Ferraris and Rolls Royces. They collect cars like we collect well, not cars, but you get the idea. When it comes to yachts, they prefer to keep it low-key. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't believe that either. In fact, the Qatar royal family has two massive floating palaces that make the Titanic look like a rubber duck in a bathtub. A very, very tragic rubber duck indeed. The two yachts look more like an ultra-luxurious, all-inclusive resort with swimming pools, beach bars, jacuzzis, and of course, helipads. And they're not just into cars, yachts, and planes. They're art buffs too. Picasso, Warhol, and friends hang out on their walls. They once broke the bank buying Paul Cezanne's The Card Players just because they could. Now, isn't that a power move? Looking at their lives, you might think that they are the richest royals in the world but they barely scrape the bottom of the top three. So who's in second place, I hear you asking? Number two, Kuwait's royal family. Kuwait's royal family, the Al Sabahs, doesn't just live in luxury. They redefine the very notion of extravagance. With a staggering net worth of around $360 billion, they're essentially the oil barons of the Middle East. Their wealth, predominantly stemming from oil exports, flows like a never-ending Arabian Nights tale. Living in opulent palaces that make Versailles look modest, the Al Sabahs know how to embrace the finer things in life. Their car collection is so extensive that it boasts its very own museum, featuring vintage classics, supercars, and even vehicles from James Bond movies. Nope, that's not a joke. Literally, they paid a massive amount to get one of the James Bond cars. Whether they cruise around and use the machine guns popping out of the trunk, that I don't know. When they're not cruising in style on land, they're sailing the high seas on their magnificent yachts, which make luxury cruise liners seem like dinghies. They even have an artificial lake for their prized Arabian horses. <laughs> because why not? But it's not just about cars and boats. They're serious art enthusiasts too, with a collection spanning centuries and cultures. They've built museums and cultural centers that would make the Louvre look like a local gallery. The Al Sabah's lifestyle isn't just about excess. It's a masterclass in how to turn wealth into a legacy. They've invested wisely, not just in oil, but in finance, real estate, 
and telecommunications, leaving no stone unturned. And while they live one truly opulent life, they try to keep it at least somewhat low-key. Something that the richest royal family in the world obviously has no idea how to do. Number 1. Saudi Arabia's Royal Family Owning a tiny fraction of the world's money might not seem like a big deal. But when you own 0.02% of all the money in the world, well, that's just showing off. Enter the Saudi Royal Family, whose wealth is so massive it makes the Rothschilds look like mere peasants. With a mind-boggling fortune of $1.7 trillion, they make the Monopoly Man look like a pauper. And boy, do they know how to flaunt it. Saudi Arabia, thanks to its oil riches and other natural resources, is basically the land of liquid gold. The $1.7 trillion? Oh, it's spread among about 15,000 family members, which still makes them richer than Tony Stark and Bruce Wayne combined. They have a taste for the finer things in life. And by finer, I mean dipped in gold. If it's not golden, it's not worth their time. Including yachts, cars, and furniture. I bet they even have golden toothbrushes. You know, for those royal pearly whites. Their obsession with gold extends to everything. From their golden Rolls Royce to their golden espresso machines. I wouldn't be surprised if they sleep on golden mattresses. Uh, though if it were so, the orthopedician bill would also be golden. Their property portfolio reads like a real estate mogul's dream vacation list. They own prime real estate in France, the UK, and basically wherever they point on the map. Their most recent buy? Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi. For a mere $450.3 million. Because who doesn't need a 500-year-old painting of Jesus Christ to spruce up their living room, right? But wait, there's more. The Saudi king, Salman Al Saud, has not one, not two, but three lavish palaces. The Al Yamama Palace alone has 200 bathrooms. That's right, they have a bathroom for every mood. And they're probably all gold-plated. Let's not forget about King Salman's car collection, including cars so expensive you'd need to sell your kingdom to afford one. And his private jets? They're basically flying palaces, complete with a golden throne room. The king even uses a custom-made golden escalator to disembark from his plane. Because, well, regular stairs are just so common. And when he's not flying on his golden plane, he's sailing on his super yachts, worth more than the GDP of some countries. But what really sets the Saudi royal family apart is their extravagant travels. They don't just book hotels, they buy them out and redecorate the entire place to their liking. They even turned the Louvre into a restaurant. Imagine eating a croissant next to the Mona Lisa. Indeed, the Saudi royal family takes luxury to a whole new level. Their wealth is so mind-boggling that they make Elon Musk's plans to colonize Mars seem like a budget vacation. But there is much more to how the Saudi royal family travels. Care to learn more about that? Just click on the video to your left.